Hey what's up guys, Alex here, thank you for checking this video and welcome to another tutorial about Gutenberg. This episode is brought to you by Skysilk. If you're looking for a powerful, reliable and affordable VPS in the cloud, skysilk.com is the answer for you. Look no further for amazing, powerful cloud computing machine starting as low as $1 per month. Click the link in the description below to learn more. Let's continue the work we did in the last tutorial. So here now we have in the edit method, whatever gets printed in the WordPress editor, we can define it here. So right now we can write something, uh, custom CTA block, something like that. The save method is what is used to define the markup and then Gutenberg will save inside the post content because you have to remember, Gutenberg is just the interface for the editor doesn't allow any reactivity, doesn't allow any JavaScript in the front end because everything is saved as a string inside the post content. So let me show you what are the shortcomings and what issue we can stumble upon. So if I, for example, copy paste exactly what's going to happen here. So in the edit, we're going to see this. So in the admin error, we're going to see the edit. And in the front end, we're going to see what we have in the save. It's perfect. If we access our administration error, we refresh. Then we add our call to action CTA, we update. If we go check the post, we're gonna have the exactly the same thing. So just a simple uh, paragraph with the class of our custom CTA and then the custom CTA block. This class is automatically added, but we can manage that if we want later, we're gonna see how it works later down the line. Now, everything works correctly. We access the post and everything looks normal. The same thing that we used to have before, we have it in the front end and we have it in the back end. But if we update the save method and we change this, for example, from paragraphs to just a regular div, uh, and we change this to edited, we save it. If we go back in our administration error, we refresh this, we're going to have a little issue. And just remember that this little block, the block contains an expected or invalid value, you need to get used to it because whenever you work with Gutenberg, you're going to see these a million times. If we open our inspector and we access our console, we're going to have a better understanding of what is happening. Basically, since WordPress stores everything that we do as a string inside the database, the string that it's coming from the database has to perfectly match what we expect inside our edit method. That's a really bad shortcoming of Gutenberg because it doesn't allow you any edit after you save the post. We're going to see in the future how to deal with these in a really bad way, how Gutenberg and WordPress allows you to deal with this with the deprecated method. But for now, let's always remember that if you change something in the save method or in the edit method and these two methods don't match what the actual string is returned, you will be forced to delete your block and save a new block. And actually just a little heads up, if you click on resolve these, it's super useless because it doesn't tell you the actual difference. It doesn't tell you what's the problem here. It doesn't actually list the issue. Always use the console log because this is accurate. What it's printed here is not accurate at all. And every time you try to convert to blocks, it will not work. If you convert to HTML, you're going to have a useless block that you cannot edit. So it's just, it's just bad. This little step is just bad. You will 100% be forced to delete this block and create a new one. But let's continue. So let's say now we want to create this little edit and save in order to allow the user to type whatever custom text they want to type. In order to do that, we need to define what type of editable attribute we want to allow the user to touch inside our custom block. And that's where we're going to use the attribute object. And to start, we're going to keep things really, really simple. So we're going to define something that the user can edit from an input field. So let's generate something, for example, the author name and the author attribute. It's actually an object itself. And we need to specify what kind of attributes this object has. For now, we can simply specify what type of object this is. And we need to specify the type as a string because we don't want to allow integers or arrays or booleans or anything 
like that just a string and that's it we can leave it like that really really simple of course there are hundreds of different attributes to an object attribute which is really confusing but whatever there are many attributes that we can define but we will see it later when we evolve our cta custom block for now we know that we have an author attributes that it's a string and now we can control it so now we need to update the uh, return the edit method in order to print an input field that the user can edit so let's change completely the html here and we can return an input which is a type of text and then we can self-closed input and then we can specify the value that is going to be equal to the actual attribute author value so whenever the user types something what which is typed it's going to be matched to the author and this is a little bit of basic of reactivity if you've never done this it can be very confused but the question is how can we use these attributes inside the edit method because if you write attributes and then the author after a period so we're accessing the object author inside the object attributes this is not accessible inside the edit method we cannot tap it automatically what we have to do we need to pass the attributes from within the edit method and to do that we need to open the curly bracket and we can say hey give me the attributes array or the attributes object. Now that we have the attributes object, we can use it here and we can tap the author. In order to do that, we need to wrap these around curly brackets. Perfect. Now we are passing the attributes object inside the edit method and we're showing the attributes author here. And for now, we're gonna completely ignore the save method. If we access our administration area and we refresh once again the post, we open here, we set the call to action. Oh, we got the curly brackets. Sorry, I did a mistake in my syntax. The value needs to be printed not inside the double quotes. And this is a particular thing of JSX. So whenever you use double quotes, it means this is a string. So if you put these around double quotes, this gets interpreted as a string, not an actual variable. But if you don't put the double quotes, even if the value is completely empty, this is gonna work because we're tapping the attributes and we're printing the author. So if once again, we delete this block, sorry about that, I forgot about it, but it's a good way of learning things. We refresh once again, we tap the call to action now, it's completely empty, but here we have an input field that is type text with empty value. And if we type something like Alex, we're gonna have our value inside the Alex. So this is an editable input field for the user. Of course, if we try to do something like we write Alex and we update, the page is updated, but if we refresh, it's completely empty. Nothing has been saved because we are not storing. We didn't create the method to store a specific attribute inside the database. And this is a weird thing about Gutenberg because by default, you think that you're inside the post editor. So whenever you create a custom block automatically all your data, it's saved inside the database, but that doesn't happen. That's not the case, unfortunately. We need to dynamically update these and we need to create the method in order to update whatever custom attribute we specified. So here in the input value, we can say that whenever something happened on change, and this is an HTML markup, attribute of the input value so on change something's gonna get triggered we can trigger a custom function that we can specify and once again let's remove the double quotes but open the curly brackets we can specify a name of a function of our choice so let's say update author something like that so we can tap that date author and you could think that now we're calling a custom function we could write our custom function outside here that's wrong. The custom function that it's used inside the edit method needs to be written inside the edit method. So whenever we need to manipulate the data or do something else inside the administration area, inside our post editor, we need to do it all inside this edit method. And this can get a little bit messy. So let's move the custom function comment here. And here we can write our custom update author method that automatically is gonna get the event coming from the input field. And this event will carry the value of our target because this is an input field. So inside the event, we can check the target. And inside the target, we're gonna have the 
value of our target. And this is really vanilla, simple JavaScript that can be confusing if you're not used to it, but just think it that way. Whenever we change something in the input, we're passing the event of the change to this very own method. And in this event, we have the target, which is the input, and we can tap the value. So if we do something really simple, like we console log this value, and my ESLint is shouting at me because when we define a function, we need to say that this is a function otherwise it is gonna be recognized as a variable, something else. So always write function before your custom function. Okay, now every time we change this, the update author will be triggered and we should have a console log. So if we open here and we remove this block, we update the page, we refresh, we tap once again our call to action, we open our console here, we clear the console and we type something. A, look at that as the pump pump. Every time we change something, Alex, automatically we're triggering the method that it's logging in our console. Whatever is happening here, also we have in the index.js at line 19, which is the line that it's triggering our console log. Phenomenal. So now what we have to do here with this event target value, we need to update the author attribute to retain this new value. In order to do that, we need to use a built-in method of Gutenberg called set attributes. Set attributes method accepts an array of parameter or actually an object of parameter which is specified inside the curly brackets and the first value is the name of the attribute. So since we're using the set attributes we don't need to say access the attributes array and then tap the author because we're already inside the set attribute. So the code knows that we're updating the attributes. We can simply specify directly the author and then the author needs to be updated to what we did before, to the event, the target, and tap the value of the target. Perfect. Now that we're doing that, automatically the attribute of the author is set whenever we change something. Okay, we save it, go back in our administration area, remove this block, we update, close the console, refresh the page, and this is one of the Weird things about Gutenberg, whenever you have to update something and it drastically change your structure, you need to delete the block and update and save. It's just super really annoying, I'm sorry. Okay, so we're updating our text, perfect, Alex. If we access the console, we're gonna have a big error here actually for uh, one error for every type that we did. The set attributes is not defined because we are not including, we're not calling the set attributes inside the edit method. Once again, if we need to use something inside the edit methods, we need to call it from within the edit method itself. So now we're fetching the attributes, we're using the attributes inside the edit method, we can also with a comma set that we want to also use the set attributes method of Gutenberg. So even if we're inside Gutenberg, we're inside the register block type, this method is not globally available everywhere. We need to tap it. It's available outside our edit method, which is kind of weird because where would you use this if not inside the edit method, but whatever. So we need to manually specify it that we want to use it inside the edit method in order to use it. Makes sense, right? Okay, let's do it again. Update here, let's refresh. If we tap Alex, okay, no errors, nothing is there, perfect. So probably our method is working. If we update, it's saved. If we refresh, ta-da, our attributes, it's saved. Fantastic. So we have our wonderful attribute that stays the same. So if it's edited, we update it. Perfect. We refresh the page because we're inside the same block. The attributes was properly stored in Gutenberg and saved. If we access the front page, it's all a hotter story because now we have the edited. So we're simply printing what we have in our save method. So whatever we have inside our save method is completely disconnected by our edit method. Nothing matches. We need to, if we want to print whatever the user wrote, we need to manually define what it's going to be saved inside the database and how it's going to be printed. So for now, we can just simply convert this to a paragraph and we can write this author name and then we can use a uh, i tag, so it's gonna be italic. And once again, if we wanna print the attributes author here, we can do it this way, but once again, inside the save method, we cannot tap the attributes if we don't specify the attributes inside the method itself. So attributes now, they can be tapped here. 
perfect. So what's going to happen for you if we try to save something? Uh, Alex is the author. So we update. Boom. Everything is completely different. And we're going to have an error, of course, because what was expected by the save method is these sort of like structure, but what was actually previously stored in the database when we had the previous setup of our safe method was this. So these two things don't match. And unfortunately, there's no way to click convert to blocks and look what happens. It's a, yeah, it's converted to a block. It's a useless block that we cannot use. So it's just always remove the block, update this thing and refresh the page just to clear the cache and be sure that all the weird shenanigans of the previous version are not going to interfere. But if we tap this and this is the Alex author, if we update, refresh the page. Now we don't have any error. This is still editable. And in the front end, if we refresh, we're going to have the author name with what actually it's printed by the database. So before concluding, just a little analysis of what it's actually saved in the database. What we have here, if we actually access our theme and in the single post, we're looking at the single post here. So if we access the single.php and what it's using, template parts, content, content single. So template parts, what is it? Template parts, content, content single. And instead of printing the content, let's actually print here echo get the content. And this method will print our content without any formatting. So we're going to see just plain text or whatever we have in our database. If we save this, we go back in the front page. And of course, we're going to have a duplicate because it's just simply HTML. But if we access our inspector and we check what we have here, look what happens. These WP tag like WP column Alec at custom CTA with the attribute author Alex, this is what happens in the WordPress database. So whenever you have something custom, a Gutenberg block with something more complicated or with something uh, that it's dynamic, it's crazy. Nothing matters in the front end because in the database, this is how it's saved. You have this custom tag that passes all your custom attributes and then you have the save method that specifies how to render those custom attributes. And that's it. Then when you open once again the edit post and you reload it, WordPress will recognize that this tag WP column belongs to a block. So it will try to find a block and re-render all this thing in a dynamic way in a JSX, in a React or wherever it's used in the WordPress administration area. That's why if we slightly change this HTML, WordPress cannot recognize anymore how to convert this into a editable way, into like a regular block and everything falls apart. So be careful about that, but that's how Gutenberg stores in your database all your data as a simple string with custom tags and then they get converted dynamically when you open the edit page again. Well, that's pretty much it for today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And until the next one, as usual, happy coding.